Here we are with our tone flaw. Now again, as we've talked earlier in, in our relationship to this DVD, we've talked about the different types of tone flaw, different sizes of tone flaw. You want to make sure that you have a pair of tone flaw that you feel comfortable with. Again, this particular tone flaw, we normally mention if you want to have the extension of the tone flaw, it should be at least one, it should be no more rather than one fist beyond your elbow. And again, unless you're using the more traditional Chinese kwai, this idyllically, the tone flaw should be no further than one fist beyond your elbow. Again, if it's only one or two inches beyond your elbow, again, that's fine as long as it's creating protection and you can strike with the end of the tone flaw. But uh, that being said, let's go back to some of our uke now applying with the tone flaw. So we're talking about, first of all, age uke, the rising block. So jodan age uke. And I'll move back and square myself off a little bit more here. There we are. Chambering back. Bring your hand across. Jodan age uke. Across. Jodan age uke. Upward rising block. Now next, we go on to the use of the forearm block. Ude uke. We start off with the inward block. Ude uke. Ude uke. Now again, we're just showing you the block itself. We're not putting any uh, dachi or game. There's no uh, stances or positions being taught, no footwork. We're just working on the basic uke in relationship to our, our kihon or basics. We can bring our hand up, blocking in across our face and back. Hand comes up, blocking across your face and back. Remember, if you don't block past your face, you won't have a face left to block. That is again, ude meaning forearm, uke, block. From here, we now work on shuta uke. A single hand coming across, blocking out. Again, our hand has to be closed in relationship to holding onto the handle of the weapon. We're not going to open up our hand and shoot the uke like this. So again, that's the key. You're blocking outward, chamber, like shoot the uke. Bring your hand across, blocking out. Or you can do this in a circular fashion, circling the hand, blocking out circling the hand, blocking out, or in a linear fashion, bring it up to the ear, blocking straight across. Bring the hand up to the ear, palm in, blocking straight across. And again, if we did it, a lot of people look in this configuration, if we went to soto or naka, we look at this and we say, ooh, you know, soto uke, naka uke, I'm blocking my rear, my, 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 my raw forearm against an opponent's attack. I want to use the tone flaw. How would I do this? Well, there's two ways you can do it. One, flipping it like so, blocking this configuration, actually hitting with the reverse tetsu, or hammer fist, or, or iron hammer, or taking your weapon and placing it in a reverse configuration here. Again, here in this position. So now, with my hand placed across the forearm like so, I can block in this fashion, and then I allow the end of the weapon Notice how it lays across my forearm. When I block out, I don't injure myself. I, again, from this position, notice how the, the, the point of the tofa, the end of the tofa, comes across in a folding action and then blocking out. I can still strike from here. Now, again, in this position, I can also bring it in from here, up over the top. Many actions can be done. But the, the key ingredient regarding this position is when I go to soto or naka uke, I have protection. That's the key. Now, that being said, now, as we go on, from this position, we're going to go into our next action, which is Gedan Barai. And Gedan Barai, in this case, I'm going to bring my hand up across my ear, a downward sweeping action, past my groin, chambering back. Notice my hands are in the tate, or vertical position. Could I bring my hand back and have the, the, the tofu resting across my rib cage? Yes, I can. But many traditional kobujutsu rus or korus keep the hands in the vertical position to ensure an easy striking, thrusting, or blocking position from this particular alignment and angle. Here, some styles are uncomfortable because the, the, the open raw forearm is placed outward. Here, I still have the position where my tone foot is resting directly against my forearm and is still somewhat exposed to protect against a possible attack. So again, get on bring it up.
up to your ear, sweeping down across your groin, and then chambering back. Hand up to your ear, Gedan Bara, and chambering back. Hand up, Gedan Bara. Hand up, Gedan Bara. Now, could I combine some of the blocks and start with an inward block and then sweep down into a downward block? Of course you can. Chambering back again. Ude, uke, gedan barai. Many of your blocks are all built into the infrastructure of a circle. And as we look at those particular circular motions, we're going to see various actions and various indigenous blocks that are going to be utilized exclusively with the use of the tonfa in relationship to not only blocking, but hooking, trapping, uh, sweeping, scooping, as we mentioned previously. Now, again, does that mean I can only block with the tonfa in the contracted or folded position? Of course not. We can also block with the tonfa in the extended position. So from here, in the extended position, jodan age uke. Jodan, and again, here's an important feature. When you do this, you want to make sure the smaller portion of the tofa is still resting directly against your fist and your forearm, the outside edge of your forearm for support. So again, from here, Jodan, Age Uke, flipping back, across, Jodan, Age Uke, and flipping back. When we utilize Uke, uke, ude, uke, I should say. Bring the hand up in this position, blocking in, striking with the extended position of the tonfa. But again, don't let this flex out. Keep your fist and the, the bottom edge of your forearm directly against the tonfa, blocking like so. Flip back, extend, bring the weapon up again, against the fist and the forearm, blocking in, flip back. Flip out, extend, blocking in, and again, if you see some distance, brace it. Brace it against there. Flip back. Now, in relationship to the outward block, we bring a hand across, sweep out. Sweep back. Bring a hand across, shoot the uke. So again, this action, I can bring my hand across here and strike out like so, and then flip back. I can bring my hand across like so, sweep out, again, blocking out, shuto uke. And I can either retract straight back on this line, or I can allow the natural rotation of torque from this position to circle the weapon back to my chamber position. Now from here, we go on to gedan barai, bring the hand up, and now when we go across from here, sweep, flip back. Bring your hand up now. Now I can sweep outward in this configuration, but then my hand goes to a vertical position. Is that no longer a gedan barai? Yes, it is. In this case, it will be tate, vertical. I can also bring my hand across here and then sweep out and strike like so. Here my hand is in the second or four-fifth position, blocking with the forearm. I can also bring my hand directly back. So I can bring my hand up, sweeping across, flip back. Bring the hand up, sweeping across, flip back. Hand comes up, gedan barai, flip back. Hand comes up, gedan barai, flip back. Now when we go into juji, or the X block or cross block, again from here you can flip in or flip out to bring your weapon to the extended position. Again, flipping outward or flipping inward. The key ingredient here is to extend the weapon out, thrust. Now, depending on the portal you learn from, some will do vertical, some will do horizontal. Why? The vertical position predominantly is designed for redirecting action. Once I make that initial contact, I draw down and strike. 